Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Welcome. Access to Democracy returns. As usual, I'm your host, Alan Miller, and we have a first-time guest today, Mark Levine. Mark, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. He wears numerous hats, Hillcrest Media, Mill City Publishing, uh, Click Industries, all of which he's going to tell us about with a little background. But I have one question for you first. When does Saturn return? Every 30 years. That was very good. <laughs> that was a good one. And Saturn Returns is the title of? A novel I wrote in, published in 2005 or 2006, but started writing when I actually was turning 30 in 1997. And it took me, uh, took me a few years to want to finish it. Now, you didn't start out in publishing. Uh, you actually were an undergraduate who majored in what, political science? Political science and journalism. <coughs> uh, went to law school. Was not, I was an entrepreneur from even way before then. You know, when I was a kid, I used to go to the local fish store, buy guppies, then they'd have babies and I'd take them back. I'd sell them back to the fish store. You know, I was that, I was that kind of kid. I. Uh, I, they used to have back in the day the electric football. You know, you'd put the guys on and the right. board would vibrate. <coughs> and I used to get it mail order, but I knew these some richer kids who really liked it. And for some reason, they didn't know where to buy it. So I would buy the teams. I would buy the stuff, and then I would mark it up a little profit and and sell it to these kids who lived over in Mendota. I lived in St. Paul. And actually, you come from a very well-known St. Paul family. Uh, your dad, Len Levine, is extremely well known. Now he's an author, but he was also a member of the city council in St. Paul. He's held state office, I believe, and uh, actually he's going to be a guest of ours uh, in January. Yeah, and he's looking forward to it. So we're looking forward to having him. Yeah, so I came from a very political background. <laughs> but someplace or other, you started writing and then you branched into publishing. So tell us about that. Uh, it was ac it was all of it was accidental. Uh, one day, I just decided that I was going to write a novel, and I didn't know anything about writing or publishing really. But you know, I felt like I was a good, decent writer, so I started writing this novel. And it took me a couple years, and I did it every day, you know, religiously. Got it done. And then it sort of sat around for a while because I had no idea really where you went to publish a book, how you went about doing it. And this was, and this was really pre-internet. I mean, the, you know, we're talking early 90s. Probably when I started writing it and maybe around 98, 99 when I finished. And at the time... And which book was that? It was a novel called I Will Faithfully Execute, which was a political thriller. Uh, conspiracy about a failing presidential campaign and their vice presidential selection was very popular so they devised this plan how they were going to assassinate their own candidate and frame the, the the White House and that's how they would eventually take power and of course the 
plan un unravels. And at, at that time, I owned Click Industries, which was an online business filing, very similar to what LegalZoom is today. And one of the, we had various websites, and one of the websites we had was we filed copyrights for people. You know, you'd fill out the, we didn't do any of the work. You just, you put in the information and we put out the form and package it up for you and send it out. That's the great thing about the internet today is that everything is there. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> it, it was, you know, that, that was a different, that was a very different time in the, you know, we were, LegalZoom didn't even exist when we started doing this. But in our course of doing this, I started, I knew that we were having success with authors doing their, um, you know, helping some of these people file their copyrights. And I started contacting various small publishers that either some did self-publishing, some were uh, traditional publishers, but today they would maybe even be a, a hybrid traditional self-publishing company. One of the, one of the companies, I contacted, I sent my, submitted my novel, I will faithfully execute. They accepted the book. They were a little small company somewhere in Massachusetts. And um, all of a sudden, I was a published author and my book was for sale. And, you know, it sold, I don't know, you know 1,500 copies maybe, which probably a lot. I probably could not do that well today given the amount of books that get published. Probably but, enough to pay for the book at that time though. Well, they, it was a, I didn't pay for the publishing, so you oh, know, I got... That's even better. Right. So I, you know, I made a, enough for some nice dinners here or there. But, and that was my foray into it, and, but my real foray into book publishing itself really was born out of out of a, my second book that I wrote, which was called The Fine Print of Self-Publishing. And again, I... Which is a book that's referred to today. Yes. Uh, people still talk about that book or use that book yes. about self-publishing. It's in its fourth edition, and right before I came, I'm working on the fifth edition. And it's... I try to turn it around every 18 months and get a new edition out. And... Well, it's not, you know, fifth edition is it's as tough. Th as things change, and they as, do so rapidly now. Well, now it's so rapid that I actually have to <clears> change <throat> a lot of the way that I do the book because my last edition, parts of it were outdated before the book even came out. You know, I cover various publishers. But back in 2000, I probably finished that book in maybe 2004. And back then, I didn't even know where you went to go print a book. I had no idea how that even happened. I, it's it was, where, where I was last year <laughs> when I wrote my first book. It was a PDF, and I and you know back then there was no other way to even you know there were no eBooks. That was an eBook, and we were again we were having all these writers come through. Um, our we had a division at Click Industries called Click and Copyright, and all these authors were coming through. And I thought I would really like you know we can't make a lot doing a copyright registration. There's only it's not a lot of money in it, so. I thought, well, I'm going to write a book about these self-publishing companies, and I'll compare their contracts and talk about their services. And in 2004, I mean, self-publishing was not even a blip on anyone's radar. It was barely, it was out there, and there were some companies that did it, but there wasn't, there wasn't much happening. And yet, and if you pick up Writer's Digest today... Uh, it's all self-publishing. Yeah. Every, I mean... You have to beat them off with a stick. Today, it's a different world. <coughs> and I use this as an example when I talk to authors a lot about, there's a lot of factors that, and we're, gonna, we're kind of going off tangent here, but there's a lot of factors that go into making a book successful. Now that book's very successful. I probably sell seven to 8,000 copies a year, every year, like clockwork. I don't do much marketing anymore. The book has sort of markets itself and writers talk about it. and. Um, but I wrote that, and at the time, there was very little competition. You know, there was a few, there's a guy, Dan Pointer, he writes a well-known book about self-publishing, his book, and maybe a few others. And so all of a sudden, I started, I started getting calls from publishers. And at, 
I mean, first I was selling a lot of books. People were using my copyright service. They were paying 20 bucks extra. They were getting a PDF. I had a website that I built all with, I studied all online marketing. So I, you know, I was one of the only people probably even advertising on self-publishing terms back then. Get, sold a ton of books that way. I thought, I didn't even look past the book. I thought, you know, I'm selling a few hundred copies a month here at $20 a pop and, you know, this is great. I didn't even think beyond that. And then one day I get a call and at the time, the first edition of that book, I covered 78 publishers. I mean, it, it was, you know, could not be done Well, you today. pointed people to 78 different publishers. Oh, no, I, I actually covered them. I went in and looked at their stuff and reviewed them. Oh, is that them. right? I'm sorry. And uh, it, was very, it was very intensive. And so I got a call, and I recognized and the person who worked. At the time, I had one employee. And the person said, there's this guy on the phone from this publishing company. He's the CEO. And I knew, I recognized the name. So I thought, oh, I bet I wrote about them in the book. I better see what I wrote. Looked up, I did not give them a very good rating. And he said, you know, this book is killing my business. He said, you know, all, everybody's reading your book. And I'd like to fly you out here and have you see what we do because I think you'll change your mind. So then I thought, you know, well, maybe I'm really, you know, maybe there's something here. And then a few weeks later, another publisher called and said, how come we're not in your book? And I said, well, I, I don't know. If I didn't see you on the internet, I don't know you exist. And they said, well, where's the print version? I said, I don't know how you make a print version. <laughs> they said, this, is honest, this is honest to God true. They, they said, well, why don't you come down? We want to be involved in this book so badly. We will do everything. The print, the design, the PR. We just want our imprint on the back. You know, you can say any whatever you want about us, but you know, we want to be the publisher of your book. So I said, Oh, you know, they said, you know, this would cost twenty five thousand dollars. I said, Oh, you know, okay. I so it seems like I should have a book printed. And they actually play back into the story. So this is probably now in 2005, it's the, it's the next edition, and Click Industries is humming along, and I start kind of getting known in self-publishing, and I, in about May, I mean, I, I almost know it right to the day, middle of May 2006, I was rollerblading around Lake Calhoun, and I thought, you know, I know what all these companies do, I know how they do it. This is called a business meeting where you're rollerblading by yeah. yourself around yes. Lake Calhoun. Yes. Ryan. I mean, I still, I st you know, I remember it vividly. And, I, you know, I was like, I, I know how all these guys do it, and they all do the same thing, and there seems to be, you know, people know who I am, and I think I have good ideas. And Why can't I do it just as well? So I get in my car. I call. At the time, I had one full-time developer who worked for me called him with what was really a basic outline. I was like, hey, could we do this? And the way our Click Industries customers log in, can an author do this? And that, then Mill City Press was the first, it, the first inklings of that, of what is now Hill, Hillcrest Media w was born. Now Hillcrest Media is the parent company? Is the parent. Um but it started out only as Mill City Press, but as we started expanding into all these different areas, we had to s flip it around. So Mill City Press, because Mill City Press is only self-publishing and we're in so many other areas of publishing now. We have a printing division, an ebook division. We have a marketing thing. We have a joint venture with Dunn Brothers where you're, we're selling yeah, books Yeah, that's now. one of the things I want to talk about and a little bit later on. So. I went back down to this guy in the guy from Texas who had got my book into print and I said, you know, I'm thinking about getting into this business. And he said, you know, you'll never make it. You can't make any money. It's it's terrible. You know, it, it'll never work. So I said, all right, but you know, you won't the be The subtext there is I don't need any more competition. Well, <laughs> interestingly, <laughs> he's out of business now. They went under, and a lot of their customers ended up coming to us. Although, you know, I really liked them, and I felt bad that that happened to them. But a lot, some of these companies are not agile enough. You, you have to really, 
in today's self-publishing environment, you have to really be able to react quickly, and you have major, you have to figure out how can I coexist with Amazon in many ways. How can <laughs> I coexist with them? Barnes and Noble as well. Well, e part of it is yes. How do I get a book into Barnes and Noble? And but we, I have always taken the approach from my own books that you, a bookstore is the last is the last stop. It's really not the first stop to get noticed, because. A very simple test. Go into a Barnes and Noble. If you don't know what you're looking for, there's a hundred thousand individual titles. In you there. can get lost. You can get lost. And uh, as, this is an example I use often in talking to authors about this, because I think once you see it from a consumer perspective, you think about where you where it's important to sell your book. So I walk into that store. Let's say I'm going. Let's say a category. Let's say I want to. A thriller to read. Well, there's going to be a wall of thrillers. Grisham, Tom Clancy, all the guys I've heard of, then a bunch of people I've never heard of, but their books look like the guys I have heard of. So now, let's say I'm a new author in my book, and I'm lucky enough that I even got into the Barnes & Noble. So my book is one of among 50 or 60. I got to rely on that consumer looking at my book, flipping it around, Liking it, not saying, "Well, this book is twelve ninety five so we're talking about public relations, we're talking about media, we're talking about an author needing to get attention, and by way of disclosure, uh, my first book, which is about this program, basically, uh, which I did last year through Bookstand publishing out on the coast, uh, you can make a difference, and yes, it's on uh, Barnes and Noble's list, and it's on the Amazon list, but it hasn't sold particularly well. Uh, one reason is there are not a lot of people who want to do what we do here in terms of local access and are, are as lucky as we are. <clears throat> but I wanted to write a book about my late dog, and so I went into Barnes and Noble, and there were two full shelves. There must have been 200 books about dogs. Well, people love dogs. My book is a little bit different. And again, by way of disclosure, we are negotiating right now with Mill City Press, which has an awesome array of published books, to take the Toby book and republish it, so to speak, and let it get popular. And uh, my name was Toby. You've seen the book. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different because it was written by the dog. And uh, I was fortunate to discover his journal uh, after he died. And uh, we had some great pictures and some illustrations. And it turned into a nice book. But I have to sell it. That's the but, always. <coughs> it's it's even, even me, you know, we started out talking about Saturn Return. Yeah. And Saturn Return was, was a great example of the pre-publishing house owner, I mean the pre-publishing house version of me. Uh, Saturn Return was the first book our our company ever did and that we still own Click Industries and we sold, Click Industries was sold about f almost four years ago now but at the time we still owned it and it was you know it was like hey we're gonna do the self-publishing thing so we need a book to try. I just written this book. Let's figure out how to put, you know, how to lay this out, how to make a cover and and you know, back then, I knew a lot about search engine marketing and optimization and online advertising and things we still do today. And I thought, well, this will be easy. You know, I'll do this. I'll put the book on Amazon. I'll just sit back. This is a no-brainer. And that's it. Doesn't work that way. I was just going to say it doesn't work that way. Uh, now for my book, The Fine Print, it does work that way, but only because my book has been out for a long time. People know about it, so people come and buy it, and then the more you buy it, the higher it shows up for certain searches. And word on of Amazon. mouth also. And so, so that book is not always, a, you know, t if I did that book today, this exact same book, it would not have the, the power that it has. Uh, you know, that all these previous editions and those other things give to it. 
and so one of the things that we really thought about the most in in what we do at Hillcrest Media is how can we help books get discovered because that is the you know any self-publishing company can take a file and give it to a printer I mean you do that with your book with Lulu I mean that that's a yeah now how the book looks how the formatting is how the covers designed those things those things can all make a difference you go you know you pay there's self-publishing companies out there you can pay five hundred dollars to well I was very lucky I worked with Avi Mishar who was very talented in that regard and took the words and the pictures etc and put them into that really attractive book but selling 60 copies of it is not really uh, what I envisioned so we get to the next question uh, what are the advantages of self-publishing and for instance with my book what do I have to look forward to well the advantages are the biggest advantage is one if it works you control everything and of course that th that's a big if but if you were gonna go on a traditional publishing route today likely what would happen is a publisher, if a publisher was even interested, and remember, with the consolidation of the industry and um, what's happening in big publishing, there aren't even that many opportunities for new authors now. But let's say they did take it. They might say, okay, you know, well, we're going to take it, but you have to go pay to market the book anyway. So now you're putting money out, and you're making t maybe, if you're lucky, 7 or 8% of the sales price. So the advantage in the self-published route is you know yes you up front you're taking more expense but you're still going to be paying the same marketing expense that a publisher would probably make you pay <coughs> and if it works you've got all the rights you've got all the success and you really can sell a lot fewer books than you would have to if you were with a traditional house to make the same amount of money and uh, you know, certainly if you can control the places where you sell you know like if you can sell from your website even even if you're self-published and you sell from your website versus selling on Amazon for me to sell my book on my website that's equal to four sales on Amazon just one book because I don't Amazon's not cut in I don't have to cut in a you know, by the time you get it back you're making a dollar or two dollars right. a book uh, which for a book that sells for about 20 or 22 dollars uh, is not a lot of money. Do you think that the print media is doomed? Because of ebooks? Because of ebooks. I don't think it's I don't think it's doomed. I think it's it I think it's affected permanently. It's ebooks now about twenty percent of the people who read books now only read ebooks. So I'd say it's it's not doomed, but I think as in another thirty years, those percentages are going to keep fluctuating. For now, it's probably leveled off. See, the Toby book just miraculously appeared right. in front of us, right. which is incredible. Uh, this is not a book that will lend itself to an ebook. It's a four-color book. Uh, it's not a print book. Actually, those lend themselves to ebooks even better. Do they? Because you can lay them out so they so they look like this does on the inside, and the cost of producing that as an ebook are much cheaper with all the vibrant color and it, it's those kind of books. Well, any book really today can lend itself to an ebook. The technology. So we have a whole new world to explore with this book. Absolutely. It's, uh, <coughs> and uh, well, that's good to know. Now you have a big operation there. Mill City Printing is a very impressive operation. I guess Hillcrest, Hillcrest. is in the same building. Uh, you've got your public relations. You've got your people who arrange the printing. You've got artists. You've got a little bit of everything. Yes. And so you have grown to how many employees? We just hired our... 31st person what, last week. And you published a lot of books. We publish a lot. I mean, well, we touch the publishing process of a yes. lot. Yes. 
because some we actually publish ourselves like a traditional publisher would. Uh, I think, you know, we Don Shelby put out a book last year. We, we were the publisher where we got the rights. Uh, Jason Lewis, the talk show host, we did his. We're doing one on the Supreme Court nomination process. So we're hopeful that there's going to be an opening in 2013. Well, it's a my novel that I just started working on is about the Supreme Court, so... Well, we're we, might we both have a similar <laughs> interest. We, we might be just ready. Uh, we actually have almost run through our time, so tell us about your joint venture with Dunn Brothers Coffee. So our joint venture with Dunn Brothers is called coffeeandbooks.com, and I had approached, I, I'd met the CEO through a mutual friend, and I had bought this domain name, Coffee and Books, many years ago, and sort of had this idea if I could find a coffee house partner, I think we could market books right into coffee houses that don't do this regularly. They liked the, they loved the idea. They were looking for new sources of revenue, income, people coming in. And so this is a pilot. I mean, Dumb Brothers is the first partner. We're hoping to take this to other regional coffee houses. Right now, it's in 60, we have eight books for sale in 65 Dunn Brothers locations. They swap out. That's got to be tremendous for the authors, every, though. Yes. Now, some of the, you know, some of them, some of our partners in that are traditional publishers. So, like University of Minnesota Press, Milkweed. In the next round, um, a big publishing house out of the East Coast. Perseus has some books in there. Another company, Source Books, out of Chicago. But we have half the spots are for Tradition, traditionally published books and half for self-published. It's a, a great idea. Uh, we have a minute and 20 seconds left. I want to mention that we're talking to Mark Levine, who is an entrepreneur of entrepreneurs, Mill City Press, which is a well-known, uh, certainly publisher here, not only in the Twin Cities, but nationwide now, and uh, <coughs> Hillcrest Media, formerly Click. Uh, so much to talk about, so little time. I want to really thank you for coming in. Oh, it's my, it's I my hope pleasure. that we can see this as a Mill City Press book. And, and an e-book. And an e-book. Uh, this is a whole new area that's opened up to me that's very exciting uh, because I was told that it wouldn't lend itself to uh, e-book publishing and, and that really uh, is something to look forward to. And I want to especially thank Jared Braun, who crawled through our studio to get the book on the table when we had forgotten to put it up here. And that's not an easy thing to accomplish, so uh, faultlessly. My name was Toby. Your name is Mark Levine. Thank you so much for coming My pleasure. In. Thanks for having me. That's Thank you.